this coral right here is probably the most unique and most beautiful that I've ever seen in all of my importing career. We just released an uh, all-in-one tank with our patented algae scrubbers built into it here. This one right now is around 195000 <sighs> Come on now. Builders, my name is Remy and welcome back to another video. Today we're at Aquashella Dallas and this video, much like the convention experience, is gonna be all over the place. Chris Meckley is gonna show us his top three corals on the showroom floor. We're gonna head to a luxury watch shop in Dallas to check out their new reef tank. We've got a new product that was just announced at Aquashella Dallas. And Joe Waiulo of the Long Island Aquarium is going to take us through a much smaller aquascape using some Carib Sea Life Rock. We're gonna start at the Reef Builders Media Lounge with our good friend, Chris Meckley. Uh, obviously, Chris knows his corals. So we're gonna go around and we're gonna find the most unique, according to Chris, which is a very high standard. So let's go back on over to the coral and we'll check it out. Let's have some fun. Let's go. I told him, I said, you have more at home? I want one. You gotta send it to me, I gotta farm it. Nice. So as long as he didn't sell this piece, we should be good to go. What is your pick here? Okay, out of Brandon always brings awesome corals to his yeah. shows every time. Um, but I was the first thing I saw when I came in here, I, my eyes went straight to one of my favorite species, a homophilia bower banky right here. Yep. Is definitely at the top of my picks. It is an absolutely gorgeous red polyp, an absolutely gorgeous green polyp that bleed together. It is probably one of the most unique bower bankies I've ever seen. I've got like 60 on the farm. Yeah. I want it. My wife said no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is really unique because a lot of times you'll see the different colors and they're separated. Yes. But this is actually bleeding into that green. The red is coming into the green there. So that's really... Bower bankies are so amazing. You can get one. This, as it grows out, I'm really excited to see if Brandon keeps it long enough to see how the new polyps grow. Yeah. Because I have a lot of bolted color versions of Bower Banky. They're not like this, but I have one that is red, purple, green, yellow, I mean, orange, it, it's just ridiculous. And as the colony grows, it bleeds. You got green on this side, red and green on this side, red, orange, and yellow on this side, red, yeah. orange, yellow, green, and purple on this side. It's just really awesome. Bower Bankies are really underrated corals, in my opinion. That one right there is definitely the top of the choice. Very good, very good. Great first choice. It is. Let's head on to number let's, two. Let's go, let's have fun. Another pick here. No, no particular order here. We're not doing this in any way. We're doing it in the order that we found the corals that are the top three picks. Yeah. And this is number two. I was told I had to come to Tyson's booth because there was this amazing Goniastria australiensis or maize brain and commonly mislabeled as a platygyra. Um, this coral right here is probably the most unique and most beautiful maize brain that I've ever seen in all my importing history career. I have to have it. Luckily, Tyson's got more of it <laughs> back in his place. So, Ghani Astria Australiensis, and it is a full-blown rainbow. And definitely, probably my top choice, but I really just, it's hard between the three that I picked. Yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. Hard. And this instantly sold, right? Yep, the first coral that sold. One of the first corals that sold at the show here. And it's not commonly, it's not your torch, it's not your acro. Exactly. Very cool that it's a Ghani Astria, so. And like I said before, it takes a lot to excite me about a coral. That is exciting. Because yeah. I don't think there's probably anybody else that has it. You know, and that really makes me want it more. Yeah. <laughs> that looks better under white. Well, it's grown <laughs> under full spectrum. I only throw all my corals under T5 full yep. spectrum. Yep. And then I bring them here and put them under blue. So yeah. that's how I see it every day. Yeah. Now that's awesome. All right, well, let's head on over to the third Sounds coral. Like plan. Number three. All right, we're at iJam Coral now with pick number three. Pick number three. And this one's good too. This one's really good. You know, I've had, I've got so many of these corals, the species. He's calling it a lithophyllum. I'm pretty positive that it is a lithocerus. And it is, I have an orange version of it with the green centers. And this one caught my eye because it has this perfect divided line of pinkish purple with the orange. I have to have it too. Yeah. It is something I need for my farm. 
And thank goodness I got to meet Jamie because I'll be able to get this piece probably in a couple weeks. Yeah. And throw it on the farm. And in a year or so, we'll be launching it commercially. So I'm stoked about that. And what he said was that this was actually an orange, Leptocirrus. Yeah. Had a pink streak in it and he started to propagate for that. And he's even got him in the shape of Australia too, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of fun. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, that piece I think is gonna be a huge hit when it gets available on a commercial scale. These guys here keep it kind of in a tight knit group, which I can understand completely. Yeah. And rightfully so for something so unique. Yeah. Um, definitely top three, one of them for sure. That's awesome. Well, Chris, I want to thank you for taking Definitely. me through your thank top you. corals. And I know, and you brought this up several times, is this is something Jake used to do at all the shows, kind of go through, take inventory, and see what's out there. Because there's always something that's going to surprise you, right? There always is. You know, it takes a lot, like I said previously. It always took a lot for him, too. But he used to always be like, come on, let's go. Let's go look at the corals. And we would just pick out our favorite ones of the whole, of the whole show. And um, those three are... Mm. On the top of the list, I just I want the Bauer so bad. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. I'm not, <laughs> not gonna get it. Those were definitely by far the three most unique pieces yeah. that I saw here. And that's saying a lot because he sees a lot of coral on a daily basis. Chris, thanks so much. Thank you. Let's uh, let every show that we're at together. Let's do that. 100. percent Every love show it. we're gonna do this so you guys can see the best pics of the show. I'm Sounds happy good. To do it with you, Sounds good. Cool. While we were in Dallas, we got invited to go see a really nice luxury watch shop with a brand new reef tank. The owner of Grand Caliber, Marco, is also a longtime hobbyist and invited us to stop on by before his big trip to load up on coral at Aquashella. This tank has been running for about six to eight months, and as you can see, it is ready for some coral. Every iteration of the YouTube channel has had some sort of reef tank, right? Yeah, yeah, we've had a reef tank in our office pretty much since the beginning. Um, I've had a reef tank at my house for the last 10 years or so. I was actually in the industry for a while too. We did servicing, we did installs. Uh, we were selling corals out of the garage, out of my house, out of the apartments. We were just trying to like figure out our, you know, our place in that world. But you know, my passion and watches kind of split me off from that, from the, you know, business side of it and more into the hobby side of gotcha. it. Gotcha. So this is one of our offices. This is our showroom right now. You know, I'll show you this. This is kind of where we keep the watches on display. So we have everything from AP, Rolex, some micro brands too, such as like Bove and, you know, Tag Heuer Breitling, you know, stuff like that, that we keep around. But yeah, we typically source watches for clients. We source a lot of big high-end pieces too that we get in from time to time. Uh, typically don't make it to the showroom because they're just so quick in and out. I have an idea. How about you show me the most expensive watch you guys have here, and then tomorrow when you guys show up, I'll show you the, the most, most expensive, expensive coral. coral. <laughs> okay, let's go. Yeah, we, what is the most expensive? That's interesting. As the most expensive watch here and its own special, you know, display case. So, so this is an RM6701 titanium and it is factory set in diamonds and probably a lot of people might find it ugly. Some people might find it amazing. What is the average? I mean, I know the prices fluctuate, mm -hmm. but what is this about right now? This one right now is around 195,000. Come on now. now do, you have, do you have corals that'll rival that price? Maybe. No, this is a newer tank for you guys, so it there's is. not a ton of stuff in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, it's still growing out. But uh, I mean, any shop that has a gigantic saltwater aquarium in, in it, I mean, we got to talk about it. So. Yeah, for sure. It's it's just the Red Sea. We're waiting on a top. So if anybody out there can help me expedite this top issue, I think we know some people. Please, <laughs> we, we are six months in just waiting for a top because we, we can't get our tanks, we can't get the fish we really, really want because, you know, most likely they'll jump out if something goes on in there. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, this is pretty much it. We, we're still getting, you know, once things really get going, we plan on fully utilizing the um, dosing system here. Yeah. And getting that, getting some SPS coral in there because like that's what I really want to do. I mean, it's not where I want it to be yet, but you know, it just kind of started. But you can, you know how got, you know, you know how it is out there. You can't just bum rush a setup like this. You need yeah. to take your time and let it develop, and you know, and just kind of keep it going at a steady rate, which I think we're doing a pretty good job of right now. Yeah, and of course, I'm always good. taking advice. <laughs> so if anybody <laughs> has any tips and tricks out there, we're always listening. Well, Marco, uh, I want to say thanks for for taking us on a tour of your store and, yeah, and showing us your reef tank. I can't wait to come back. Maybe Aquashella next year we can yeah, come back well, and it'll you be. Know what? Um, we're gonna, you know, after Aquashella, this is probably gonna look a little bit different. We're probably gonna 
throw down on some corals now because this is the moment to you know start adding corals when you can get in cheap because aqua shell i mean get some deals yeah for you sure know, a couple of years ago we went and i mean at the very end of the show when everybody's packing up we were just kind of running around yep. like last minute deals it's and whatever's left time. over and <laughs> they didn't want to travel with that stuff because chances are it might die right but awesome. yeah thanks for having yeah me we'll see you tomorrow show. yeah one hundred ninety-five thousand dollars for a watch that seems so crazy we'll have to check in with marco when he pops back on over to aqua shell because i think i might have found the most expensive coral. Before we catch up with him, let's go head over and check out a new product that was just launched at Aquashella Dallas. This has been in the works for quite some time now. It's an all-in-one aquarium complete with an algae scrubber in the back. All right, here with Josh with Clearwater Scrubbers. You've got a brand new product though. You gotta, you gotta take me through this. We just released an uh, all-in-one tank with the algae, our patented algae scrubbers built into it here. So we've got two size tanks. This is our 36 inch with a 45 gallon display. And then we have a 48 inch with a 60 gallon display. So I've seen a lot of people come up and they're like, where's the sump? But I mean, no, there's no more nothing sump. there. So it's all, it's all built in, but we do give you a control board under there to hold all your equipment. So all your filtration now is back here like a standard all-in-one aquarium would have with your drains over here. But a little something different on ours is it's got a single drain over here to power the built-in algae scrubber that ours has. Very nice. And then the light hangs off the back of it to illuminate that from one side. Your return chamber's here, and there's a nice filter block here to filter out all the particulates and help keep the aquarium nice and quiet. So take me around to the back of this thing. Okay. So the back side here, you're, you're completely wrapped in vinyl on it. You have your algae scrubber light, UL approved lamp that you can pull on, take off. It's the same, same lamp that we use on our top of the line scrubbers. It's just an individual light now. So uh, I can mount the, it's half inch glass mount your lights either to the glass or to the overflow that's in there. Uh, stands are all solid wood design. Uh, doors are made out of fiberboard, so the doors won't ever warp or anything like that. What's a big question that you've been asked so far about this? Uh, primarily, where's the scrubber and how did we do it? Yeah. How, how are we able to incorporate that in without adding another pump in there? So it, it took a little designing on the way the water would flow back through there but we got it, Very we got good. it figured out. So you actually get some pumps with this, some CJ stuff, right? Correct, yep. So basically we call it our all-in, all-in-one. So we give you a controllable uh, 6.0 SDC uh, CJ pump, the controllable wave maker inside of it. We give you a heater for it. And we also partnered with Vivid Creative Aquatics here for their random flow generator nozzles. Very nice. On on top of the adaptive reef control board down below. So it's, it's four great companies all come together on one big product. Well, Josh, thank you so much for taking us through the tank. We appreciate it. Thank you. I'm really curious to know your thoughts on this new scrubber. Please let us know in the comments section below. One of the biggest differences this year was the Reef Builders Media Lounge, where we had a ton of different aquascapes set up. We'll have more of these aquascape setup videos in the future. Uh, in fact, Jeff Sensky of ADG put on an entire clinic with his aquascape. We'll get some of that footage in the future. But for now, I just caught Joe Waiulo at the end of his scape, and he's gonna go ahead and take us through what he did with all of this carob seed life rock. Now keep in mind, he's used to escaping a 20,000 gallon coral tank at the Long Island Aquarium. Let's see how he does on a much smaller scale. Having some fun here with the Carib Sea Rock and uh, first time really playing with it and I really like the natural locks and keys that it has going on. Um, so just looking at what rock was available, kind of just coming up with uh, a design. I like a lot of caves, a lot, a lot. I like a lot of openness within the, within the tank. Um, also that it's kind of freestanding. Uh, and then conceptually of like what, you're, what is the goal of the corals. So in here, I'm really not leaving a lot of vertical space because I'm thinking of more encrusting corals and some mushrooms and things like that. And really have some cool fish in here like some royal grammas and assessors. Um, there's not a lot of height in here, but that's kind of by design based on the critters that I was doing. A Little bit of room on the side there to allow some coral growth to come in. But often a lot of times rock work is done 
too much and not allowing a space for the corals to actually grow into the environment. Uh, so it's really important to decide like what, while you're doing your rock work, what's involved and what's your end goal with the, with the corals. Uh, if I was doing a lot of SPS and wanting our corals to grow large, which I know is a different thing these days in tanks compared to years past, um, but this will allow uh, really good water flow uh, around the entire, it's not on, against the back wall, so it's not just a wall of rock, it's kind of freestanding. So that allows really good circulation around the tank. And now I'm just trying to play with a few little pieces for the bottom, uh, where you could put some corals, maybe like some zinnias or something like that, uh, that would overwhelm the main reef structure, but you can make little uh, patch reefs of those corals. Or uh, I've been trying to force this one in somewhere, just a flat rock that you could kind of just bury in the sand a little bit, kind of disguise it a little bit for some fungias or other corals like that that do like to live, uh, but they really won't do well in the sand. So you can place flat rock like this, kind of hide it in the sand and almost, almost bury it in the sand really. Um, and then the, those fungias and things have a, a really nice solid base to sit on so they won't suffocate in the sand. This was a nice surprise when I opened up the rock with the precast holes with the fiberglass rod. This is something that I just did when I rebooted the 20,000 gallon tank. I have eight foot rods of, of um, one inch uh, fiberglass and just stacked rock up seven feet tall. Uh, it's a great way to get vertical height uh, without a lot of structure, which is, which is very exciting to have in the industry. And you can just turn them and then hide them. And remember the corals are gonna grow so fast that the exact positioning of this rock really doesn't matter because in a few months, to a year or something, you're not even gonna see that. But it's a great way of getting uh, a lot of vertical height without having to build a really huge base to support that. So this is a really nice touch. The bigger rock does have holes in it to actually accept these. So like if I, if I were to do, which I'm not going to do, but there's a, a hole back here. I'm gonna try and do this right on camera here. That's a really nice way of getting uh, vertical height in the system without having to have like a bunch of massive rocks. Doesn't fit this specific spot. One of the other things to keep in mind when designing a reef structure is there, there's the, uh, the golden rule. We're hardwired to really enjoy that ratio. It's in all the architecture, it's in uh, facial features. Uh, so just trying to keep that in mind when you're designing your rock work. I, I kind of have it here a little bit. I ended up going a little bit taller than I was thinking, but if you have that, one to 1.6 ratio, hard wiring, we're gonna like that tank even more just because it's got that composition that we, we as humans, for some reason, are hardwired into that. Uh, so that's one thing to consider also. I think we need to visit the Long Island Aquarium, say hi to Joe and maybe uh, go diving. Huge thanks to Carib Sea for providing all of the rock for our aquascapes this year that includes salt, fresh, and we even had a reptile enclosure as well. And also big thanks to Planet Aquarium for providing all of those aquariums that you saw. Each of those tanks was auctioned off and all the money was donated to Brian Barczyk's family. Before we wrap up, Marco did find us at Aquashella Dallas and I had to show him the most expensive coral at the show. Well, you made it to Aquashella. Yes, sir. What have you thought about it so far? Uh, well, you know, I've been walking around. We about got halfway until I ran into, you, uh, ran into your booth. And uh, so far, it's been really interesting. I bought a few corals for my tank, and nice. now um, I was exploring uh, buying another tank. So yeah, you know. all of the tanks that we have here in the media lounge have are, are up for auction. So gotcha. I, yeah. I hope well, you win. I threw it, I threw down some bids. So I we'll think see. I did find the most expensive coral we have here. Okay, and I'll take you to it now. Right, let's go. We'll see if you want to buy that one. Let's check it out. So how do you feel about mushrooms? Uh, I love mushrooms. Okay. Like some balanced mushrooms. Easy to some, take care of. Yeah, they grow very nicely. <laughs> now let's see if you can pick out which one is the most expensive in here first. Oh God, I already know which one it is. I'm guessing it's Good this guess. one. Wow, guess. he guessed it right on the money. Right on now the, if you can guess I mean, how much on, it is. It's on the pedestal though. Like, so That's it's true. Gotta, it's gotta be it's like it's all center. Yeah, yeah. It looks like the arm at the office. Yeah, yeah, right. like no one else is touching it. Right. Now you have to guess the price tag. Retail is 7,500. Yeah, that's what, that's what I would take. Okay, if you're asking 10? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, $7,500. I feel like that's the most expensive coral it here. Is. Yeah, it is. Damn. Explain to me why that coral is so expensive. It's, the, it's more like the lineage and just, just finding one with that, not that much purple. 
Brief Builder did an article on the Purple Monster, and then that made it famous, and then the, that's just one of the best ones you'll ever find. Wow. I mean, which is specs of purple, they're a couple thousand, but I mean, Damn. just this one has three different shades of color alone. So how much is in the tank total? Uh, probably about 20, 25 grand, something like so that. 20, 25 yeah. grand. Oh man, well dude, that's sick, hey, dude. it was good meeting you. Yeah, it's person, all, well, yeah, good meeting you again. Like I said earlier, we've got some more Aquashella content on the way. Really want to get you that Reef Builder Studio update as well. That one should be coming out very, very soon. And if you're looking for more reef talk, maybe on your way to work or while you're doing some tank maintenance around the house, check out the Reef Therapy Podcast. You can find that on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please, if you could, support the channel. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification, and I'll see you in the next one.